this video, I'm gonna give you guys five really honest pieces of advice. For some of you, it's not what you wanna hear, but it's what you need to hear. If you watch this whole video and say, oh, nothing relates to me, and you don't change anything after this video, this video was probably specifically for you. So if you guys are a middle school player, high school player, college pro, even just a parent or a regular person, you guys can take value from this video if you guys listen and apply this information. The first thing, which is one of the biggest lessons that I think I can give to every single player, if they really actually think about it, is not trying to fit in. This is something that I see ruins a lot of players' careers. I see a lot of kids, freshmen, sophomore, huge potential, potential D1, potential pro athlete, and then they start worrying about trying to fit in. They're working out every single day, they're on a good grind, they're getting better. All of a sudden they get really good, then they start worrying about being the cool kid on campus. What got you to that point was not fitting in, was not being normal. By definition, if you wanna do something abnormal, you can't worry about fitting in. If you wanna go play in college, you're gonna be in the top 3% of players. By definition, you're not normal, you are not going to fit in. So if you start worrying about trying to fit in and be normal, go to all the parties, go to all the social events, you're starting to fit in, you're starting to do what everyone else is doing. And if you're doing what everyone else is doing, you're simply going to get the same results. Now that applies to obviously to everything across life, but it's something I see so many basketball players do. The second point is college basketball is not just D1 or bus. The sad reality, point blank, is most players who wanna just go D1, you know, if I don't get you know, a D1 offer, I'm not going to play in college. Most of you guys are just saying that because you just want the social image of going D1. You feel like if you go D3 or D2, you know, it doesn't live up to who you think you are. But in reality, if you were actually go watch D3, D2 games, there's a lot of really good players and there's a lot of really good players that go from D2, D3, go on and there's people even playing in the NBA who did that. So most people just say that because of the social image. They want people to gas them up on social media. They wanna post that cool commitment and get a lot of likes. But then once everything calms down, once they actually step and play D1, everything hits the fan. So if your real goal is to reach your potential as a basketball player, you know, play beyond college, go and play pro, the real priority should be the fit and actually making sure you're in an environment that's conducive to your long-term goals. Maybe for some of you, all you wanna do is play college basketball and that's fine, but you need to start to think beyond that. Which brings me to my third point is finding an actual good fit should be your priority. Okay, maybe you have a couple D1 offers. It may look cooler, it may sound cooler that you can go D1, but maybe the D2 fit's gonna be the best fit for you because you're gonna play, you have a better coach, it's better for your major, the schools may be in a better area, it's maybe closer to where you live, or maybe it's in a better location climate-wise. If you're gonna go play in college, you need to take everything into consideration. I think this is a big mistake that a lot of players make, is they just focus on the basketball, and they really just focus on the image of what that's going to give them, right? Is it good for the job that you want? Is it good for the major that you think you're gonna be pursuing? Is it good for your mental health, right? Are you going to a D1 school that's in the middle of nowhere with 300 kids that's gonna be absolutely miserable, right? Yeah, you went D1, but everything else around that is not gonna be fun once you actually get there. So I think if you guys can, okay, I, I understand that that's something that you guys wanna do, but okay, let's look beyond that. How is this school major-wise, right? Is this something that I'm gonna pursue? How is this school in terms of the social life, right? Is it a bigger school? Is it a smaller school? Is the coach a good guy, right? It may be a good program, but is the coach a good guy? Are you actually gonna get playing time? Is it going to help you for your development as both a person, as a player? Start to take everything into consideration and start to look beyond just that first year of you going to school. Start to think within that four year increment, start to think beyond college in general, what you're gonna do after and how that current next setup is going to lead you into your future. And I think most people just don't do that. You may go to the school, the coach may leave and everything may change. You wanna make sure that everything else is solid as well. You may go there, you may get hurt, you can't even play the first year. So you wanna make sure that everything else within your environment, within that school, is also conducive and not just the basketball part. Now the fourth point, which I think is really good, no matter where you guys are at, if you guys are a high school player struggling, you know, you're trying to get offers, maybe you just got hurt, maybe you're at a college program and things just aren't going the way that you want them to go. One frame of reference that I always think back to, no matter how difficult or even how great things are, there will be a future day where you wish you are where you currently are. No matter how difficult things are, you're gonna look back in two, three years, be like, damn, I wish, you know, I wish I could go just go back to that moment and relive it again, so appreciate it. Yeah, you may be just, you know, head down, grinding, focused on just trying to get that scholarship, but also appreciate where you are. And number five, kind of following up to that point, there's a lot of different things I said about, okay, social image, what people think about you, trying to go and get an offer. At the end of the day, all you can control is what you can control. Getting a D1 offer is somewhat outside of your control. What can you control? How much work you put in, how smart you work, putting yourself out there, emailing schools. Beyond that, you don't have control. You can't physically make someone give you an offer. You can set yourself up, put yourself in the best position possible, work as hard as you possibly can. But at the end of the day, 
what's beyond that is outside of your control. I think a lot of people spend too much time and too much energy focused on things that they can't control. Oh, what does this person think about me? Or why am I not getting an offer? Why am I underrated? Why am I this? Why am I that? You can't control any of that. If you're gonna spend all your energy on that, you're not spending as much energy as you can on the things that you can't control. Sometimes you need to sit there and kind of audit the things that you're doing, the things that you're thinking about. Maybe you're too worried about what other people are doing and the offers that they're getting and you're spending all that energy on that. And at the end of the day, things will happen to your benefit in one way or another. And again, like I said in that last point, you'll wish you are exactly where you are at one point in time. So enjoy it. Enjoy the journey. Hopefully these tips help you guys. If they did, drop a comment. Let me know which one helped you guys the most. Appreciate it.